traders, this is Jack and welcome to your Thursday update. I wanted to go ahead and make this video a review and I want to start out with a zoomed out lens. So we're on a weekly time frame with the S&Ps and you can only go back to, you know, middle of 2020, beginning of 2020 on the far left hand side. The important part really is just to see the bigger view. Uh, obviously, you know, with a weekly time frame, you're not going to have a lot of detail in the type of swings that we've had in this type of market. Um, but I want to show you something that I think is really interesting. Uh, ever since we put in the uh, October low of 2022 down here at this daily 200 SMA, um, we've made higher lows and higher highs. And I know that it hasn't been pretty and you might say, well, Jack, you know, it's it's almost six months later and we're barely breaking through the range um, that was the most recent high back in 22. And what does that even mean? And so I want to just take a step forward and go from a weekly time frame and give you this daily just to show you how range bound we have been. And this isn't really um, like a super strong bullish argument. But what it is, is it's basically a video saying, hey, things aren't really falling apart. And I tend to, in times like this, apply some of the intangible, more esoteric things that I've learned in trading during these times whenever it seems like every bearish move wants to just completely limit down and fall apart and crash. But we're not doing that. In fact, we're kind of in a very sneaky way doing the opposite. We're actually planting a seed um, to make a new high inside that green column, November for example, and then we'll fall apart for about three weeks and then we'll climb back up to, to a new high and then we'll fall apart and trade sideways for a few weeks and then this is getting to what I want to talk about which is you know 39.50 and higher. If you've been in the futures room with me, you know that 39.50 and the S&P is a really important level. Um, and we're higher than that today. In fact, we're at 4,000 and we had some news over the week where, you know, there was a Russian jet spraying jet fuel on a drone and that certainly, you know, tore the market to pieces. And all of a sudden on a Thursday, we've recovered and we're in a very healthy way back up to 4,000. Okay. On top of this, I always say everything goes back to what the dollar is doing. And I track the dollar index, so DXY for, you know, really good helper here. Whenever you have a percent and a quarter up move in the dollar, which took you to about 105 half, that's clearly going to be putting a pretty large overhead ceiling on the S&P and the markets in general. I mean, my gosh, the Dow was down 500 points, NASDAQ was down 200, but you kind of erase all that after trading today. So we are making higher lows and higher highs, and we've been doing that in this very kind of slow, low-key way. And I've got to think that, you know, one of these quotes, these trading quotes, where it's like, okay, the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain liquid. That's kind of the theme to this video, which is this might be really bad news for bears. And, you know, we do have now two interesting compressions. Um, there's a weekly squeeze on the S&P, which I think eventually is going to overall resolve higher and we're going to have somewhat of a, a, a rally. Um, but we also have a squeeze in the dollar. And I don't think that it's a squeeze that's going to eventually revolve around 106 and 107. I think that's going to be opposite. We're going to go back down to the previously low point that we put in uh, back in February at 101. And I got to think that if the dollar is at 101, I wouldn't be surprised if the S&Ps were trying to retest um, 4,300. So I know that it's pretty straightforward, um, but sometimes it just has to be. You know, there is no, you know, secret formula right now. Um, from a Voodoo line perspective, if you've been in the Simpler store and you check out the Voodoo lines and you trade with the Voodoo lines, uh, there's an S&P fire line at 4100. And I, you know, we tend to think anyone that been anyone that's been using these kind of tend to think that these are magnets. So 4100, if we're there next week, you know, do we rally for the rest of March into the first week of April? 
okay? And then that gives us an opening of about 30 days into sell in May and run away for this to actually track back into 4,200 and dare I say 4,300 um, because we know that that's the August high of 2022. And you know, heck, why not? <laughs> Um, that would be an ir irrational move, and so um, I think we can I think we can use this to our advantage. There's a lot of really interesting uh, trading philosophies that we can apply here, and I hope that they come true. This will be a really nice like case study for any traders in the future. Um, whenever the news is bad and banks are crashing and interest rates and inflation and wars, it's just all bad, right? Well, that's typically where I want to see a rally in the market. Um, and so that's what I'm expecting. Uh, we have a weekly squeeze on the S&P, which is kind of nice, even though this might take forever. Just be reminded, it actually started to compress at the beginning of the year. And, you know, it just kind of went up, came back down. We still compress. And so I tend to think that this is actually going to be something to where, to you know, to no surprise for anyone that's already bullish, we kind of expect something that's going to take us back into our previously traded liquidity, which is 41 and higher. Um, I wish I could give you a little bit more on gold and silver right now. It's a hurry up and wait to see if we can buy the dip at 1880. Uh, again, I don't think that we're jumping back down to 1850. Those days are probably over. Um, and, you know, if you've heard anything about my coverage on gold and silver, I think they are grossly undervalued. So I'm certainly excited to, you know, buy some GLD long calls with you going into next January uh, on the next dip that we have for gold. Um, tomorrow in my futures session, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the uh, not so precious, precious metals like copper, nickel, palladium. There's an interesting little five to 10 minute segment I want to throw out there in my session just to give you an idea. There's different stocks you can trade, different stocks you can buy. And I do think that we're kind of entering this phase of flight to quality, flight to safety. It's certainly not crude. Uh, it'll certainly be gold and silver, things that are actually tangible. Uh, and it'll also be things like bonds, but um, you know, for right now, the way I see this is, you know, my message is not a doomsday scenario. Mine is actually um, kind of an irrationally bullish mode uh, until May. So we have a, quite a while uh, for this thing um, to do a little bit of a rally. And it might be the last rally that we experience for this year, um, or it may not be. We might just be in the middle of a complete recovery from 2022, and it could actually be a little bit more on the bright side for the rest of the year. But um, with just to stay within scope right now, tomorrow we'll be discussing the S&Ps, especially if we kind of melt up into 4050 and 4075. I think that really starts to plant that seed. Um, not that we already haven't planted that seed already to stay above 3950, which is a huge level, um, but really just to say, all right, well, this can also continue. So a message for the bulls out there. Um, I'm a little bit more optimistic, even though, uh, you know, you can look for two seconds on Twitter and Reddit and, it, you know, it says short. I just don't think that's the, the right way to go right now. Um, so I'll see you tomorrow. A uh, little bit more, more of a introduction into some things around copper, silver, and the other precious metals. And we'll talk about it in the session. Hopefully I will see you there. All right. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to like and comment down below to help us out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can get notified when we release our next video. And if you want to watch us trade in real time using our own money, go to simplertrading.com to learn how to sign up. Good trading, and we'll see you in the next video.